Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. I hope you guys like the change of setup here. I'm starting to change around the setup a little bit to have the videos kind of have a nice and better flow. I'm creating my bedroom as you guys can see. This is like, I literally sleep in this room um, to be a little bit more of a YouTube setup since I've been delving more into this. So hopefully this looks a lot better than um, the other sets that I've had. But anyways, this video, I wanted to talk about my reflections on being a self-taught dev for a year now. Some of you guys have been following me for a little bit on Instagram where I started documenting my journey. If you guys haven't checked me out on Instagram yet, you can follow me somewhere around here. I'll put the uh, display name that I have down there or my handle. But I started documenting my journey around September-ish of 2019. And ever since then, I've been at learning software development slash web development for a year now. And I kind of wanted to go over a couple things that I've learned over the year and hopefully help some of you guys out to see if I can't help any of you, you know, kind of improve or see where you can be a little bit more productive in your journey in becoming a self-taught web developer. Now, that's not to say that, you know, this is going to be a one-to-one -one, uh, kind of kind of deal. Everyone learns at their own pace. Everyone learns through different resources. Everyone learns a little differently. So take this with a grain of salt. Don't take this, you know, to heart. I'm just trying to show you guys and tell you what I've learned and what I've experienced and try to help you guys and guide you in the in a certain direction, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the right direction because at the end of the day, as web developers, especially being self-taught, we're never done learning. We're always learning, we're always doing something and you know the learning process never ends. So don't feel like there is an end goal to all of this. There will always be something new to learn. Time moves on and as time moves on, there's gonna be new things to know. So again, like I just said, Take this with a grain of salt. First things first, the actual one thing I wanted to touch on was that feeling that I felt like I wasn't enough. That was kind of the one thing that I had to learn how to deal with very early on. You know, being on Instagram as my primary platform, I always felt like I was never up to par with some of the other devs that were in the industry and in the community. They were always that much farther ahead of me. They were always that much farther in terms of building these projects that I didn't think I was capable of building and you know getting in my own head about what others might think of me and just overthinking that whole situation right there. So the one thing that I learned how to deal with and am still learning how to deal with is overthinking and putting myself in a situation where you know the that's that certain situation isn't necessarily true you know other people aren't really judging you for the projects that you've built other people aren't really judging you for where you are in your journey you are where you are and that's what it is you know everyone has to start somewhere and just because someone in the community and you know our dev community on instagram and youtube in general and twitter is very very motivating very very you know non-judgmental for the most part, right? There, you, you'll get those occasional people who like to gatekeep or who like to bash people for literally zero reason because they're insecure. So you get those people from time to time, but regardless, in our community, I feel like for the most part that we have some awesome, awesome people that are like-minded and very, very motivating. So I wouldn't necessarily be you know, wary of that because there's not much of it in in comparison to maybe some other communities that are out there. But you know, you're gonna get those people that wanna shoot you down for being where you're at, but at the end of the day, they started at the same place as you did. So try not to get too um, in your own head about it. You know, like I just said, you start where you start and you're only gonna progress up from there. So focus on progression, do not focus on where you're at right now. Every single day, you will get better and better and better. So if I go back onto my Instagram and see where I started and where I am now, I mean, that that progression, all the stuff that I've learned, it's so amazing to see. And it's the same thing and can be applied to anything else. You know, your gym progression. See where you were in terms of how, many, how much weights you lifted when you first started to where you are now, you know what I mean? Like it's the same progression, you can't be bogged down about where you are now. Look in the future and focus on that every day. There's something new that you need to walk away and have learned, you know what I mean? I always set myself a small goal of, hey, okay, if I was learning HTML, I need to learn some of the new semantic uh, tags, some of these like sections, articles, all these different tags. As long as I spent five minutes to 
five to 30 minutes a day learning those things and I can now, you know, p potentially teach someone that I've succeeded in that day. So like I said, don't worry about today, worry about tomorrow and what new things you could potentially learn and keep building upon those small goals. Don't think too big and don't think, don't think too broad. The one thing I also had to learn and teach myself was not to learn too much. Um, and what I mean by that is being stuck in what we call tutorial purgatory, tutorial hell, um, you know, buying all these courses and not sticking to just the one and not finishing all of them to completion. Those were kind of the big problems that I had very early on was I saw all these awesome courses on Udemy, all these awesome courses on YouTube that I would save to my watch later playlist and then not get to them. The one thing I had to learn was slow down, stick to one course and finish it all the way through. I had to do it to a completion. If I didn't do it com to completion and I had to step away, I had to stay disciplined and you know, force myself to really, really finish it. Otherwise, you know, I'm failing myself and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be learning some either conflicting things or just half ass something and not learn it all the way through. So that was the one thing that I really, really want you guys to pay attention to is understand that picking so many resources isn't necessarily the best thing to do. And it's probably advised against find one or two resources. And my, my general guidelines for that is finding a video course, finding a book, and that's it and then maybe using articles as supplementation. Don't pick too many, you know, you're just gonna overwhelm yourself with too much information and there's a lot to learn. So find a course that you like and that course should be dependent on the instructor and how he teaches. You know, there's gonna be those people out there on Udemy and YouTube, specifically for the videos, where they just teach material a lot better and they can word things in a certain way that makes sense to you. So once you find that instructor, then you know, dive deep into their courses and just stick with it. You know, it, you keep switching from instructor to instructor to course to course, you're just going to slow yourself down and you're going to get confused. So stick with the course. Don't pick too many and narrow it down. The other thing that I learned from being a web developer for a year now is building things is actually very important. You know, we always as self-taught people want the easy way out and we like to just build these projects from these tutorials and feel like we're learning something from actually just coding along a tutorial, which isn't necessarily productive in any way. Yes, you're learning something, but you need to be actively building something that means something to you. And that's a topic that I actually want to touch on my podcast and potentially in another video. If you guys want to see that video, then hit me down in the comments for this, but a video on how to actually choose your side projects that you want to build. So that's the one question I get asked a lot on Instagram is, Hey, what kind of side projects can I build with react with with HTML and CSS, with JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, you know, what can I build? And my thing was, I would always build something that means something to me. This most recent project that I built in React that I still need to get back to is a React barbell calculator where you can go in. Right now it's a web app. I want to switch it over to React Native so that it can be a native mobile app and practice on React Native as well. But, you know, building something that meant something to me was I always had a problem in the gym where I would look at a bar, there's all these plates, but I don't know what's on it, or I need to get to a certain weight, what's the easiest and fastest way for, for me to get there using what plates. So I, I developed an app that would, you know, spit back to me depending on what weight I gave it, how many plates and what plates I would need to get to that specified weight. So that's an example of me solving a problem that I, you know, one, generally I'm passionate about, two, really, really desperately needed in the gym. Another one was a passion, you know, the NBA stats app that I built. If you guys haven't checked that out, you guys should check it out on my GitHub, which I will link in the description as well. But I built something where, you know, I'm very, very passionate and love watching basketball, specifically the NBA. And I wanted to practice with APIs, third party APIs and fetching that data and displaying it out to a user. So I finished a course that I was taking on Udemy, took that project and built the same thing from scratch, except, you know, used what I learned to build a separate app that displayed NBA stats for specific players that you would search. So I was querying player names, querying people per team, 
you know, all these different things and, you know, playing around. And I was also implementing Redux into that project. So it was a very, very long and very difficult project that I set out for myself. But in the end, and at the end of the day, I learned something new and I built a project that meant something to me and walked away with a lot of retained knowledge in React and Redux, specifically that workflow with state and messing around with action creators and all that stuff. So. Um, that was a fun project and I highly encourage you if you are looking to become a self-taught web developer and you know want to be walking away with knowledge and actually learning something, go build something that you're actually passionate about. If that's building a website for a friend or a local business that you have somewhere, that's that's something that actually would make the most sense is going around in your local area wherever whatever city you're in looking up local and small businesses especially right now in this time look at their website if their website's not up to par build one for them and then offer it to them maybe for a price maybe for free whatever you want to do right but that's actually a practical project that you can set out and do right now right if you are already in the game and have learned html css and then maybe a little bit of javascript or you're already using react and using gatsby as a static site generator to build websites it's a perfect avenue for you to jump into. Find those local businesses, find those friends that have businesses, or find places that don't have a really good website and build one for them and then offer it. Or you can straight up get into that freelance world and, you know, kind of just suck it up and disregard all of the negative thoughts that would jump into your head if you're jumping into freelancing and all that self doubt and just, you know, say, hey, I can build you a new website that would function a lot better and help you create more income and potential clients if if they're client based offer it to them see what they say if they agree then you got yourself your first client and just build a website and you're good you know what i mean i would like the first route where i would create the website beforehand because either way you walk walk away with practical experience having built a website from scratch that's actually usable and would look good comparatively to what they have now if they if they say no, they say no, you built a website you could put on your resume. If they do, you get paid for it and you get put on your resume. So it's a win-win right there. The other thing that kind of ties in with the first topic that I talked about in this video that I kind of had to learn even now is overwhelming myself with too many tasks. As a self-taught web developer, there is no curriculum. There is no structure. You create your own structure. You create your own curriculum. So again, back to the resources, you can get overwhelmed by all of that. Going through Twitter on Instagram, you see all these different developers work with all these different technologies and then you wanna go try it. You know, I saw Scott Talinsky from Level Up Tuts, shout out to you, Scott. I've, I've learned a lot from Level Up Tuts, but you know, I saw a tutorial from Svelte um, that he made and I really wanted to try it. What did I do? I stopped everything I was learning and I wanted to learn Svelte. Yes, it was cool. Have I ever used Svelte after that? No. Uh, did I learn some things? Yes, absolutely. But is it practical for me? Probably not just because most of it was specific to Svelte that I would not use in React. So th that's the one thing that I'm still struggling with is overwhelming myself, especially being a content creator now, creating content for Instagram, creating content for YouTube, being active on Twitter, being active on my podcast, being active on different realms where I'm trying to create this as my full-time job it's very easy to get overwhelmed and very easy to lose sight and lose track of where I'm trying to go and what directions I'm trying to go on certain platforms that may not necessarily relate to you. If you're not a content creator and you're just focusing on self-taught web development, it still applies. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. So take a step back and slow down. That's maybe the one thing that I find so so problematic in the self-taught web development world is people go way too fast. You know, you see these articles of people wanting to be web developers three months, six months, a month, a week, like something crazy like that. And it's just not practical for the normal human being. Yes, you will get the outliers that are able to do those things and become web developers in that time frame, in that time domain. But you know, it's just not, if it was gonna be that normal, everybody would be doing it. It's very rare that someone does that in that time domain. It's, it's, I mean, good for them, right? Like that's awesome that they can do that in that short amount of time. But for the rest of us, it's just not going to work that way unless you get very, very lucky or are very, 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 very smart. So uh, unless you're like 
photographic memory and can retain knowledge in seconds, then I wouldn't expect it. I wouldn't set those expectations too high. I would just go with the flow, take your time. You know, you're not losing any time. There are plenty of people that are going out into the field who are older and are still making it as web developers. So take your time. We have plenty. There's no need to rush. There's no need to skip JavaScript because you want to get to those frameworks because they're fancy and that's what people are asking for. Take your time, build the foundations, then work your way up. It's very, very easy, like I said, to get overwhelmed in this kind of space. So taking a step back, looking at the broader view and just slowing your pace down is something and is probably the most beneficial thing that I've learned being a self-taught web developer in a year. Those are just my couple tips that I've learned over the year. There are plenty smaller things that I've learned over the past 12 months, but those are some of the bigger ones. I hope some of that helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, anything on the video, anything you guys wanna see in the future, hit me down in the comments. Please hit the like button and subscribe because that would definitely help me out. If you guys wanna check out any of my other content, my social media will be linked down below as well as the gear that I use if you are ever interested. But that's gonna be it for me today. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.